Hi, I'm Linda Leon and welcome to today's program. What we're going to be talking about today is working with sponsors. I think that that is an area that most new authors don't think about because you might feel that your product is too small to get sponsorships, but that is far from the case. You need to begin to stretch out and seek sponsors because they can really, really make your life better in terms of what you're able to do with your book. And you would be surprised how many people will partner with you on your book simply because of the fact that they get something out of it. They get direct advertising with your audience and that's something that they want. I remember when I first started using sponsors, I was a little nervous at first. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what they would think of my approach. But what I found um, to be true was if I would just get in there and share my vision and share what it was I was trying to accomplish with my book and show them how it could benefit their organization then I believed in my heart that I would get results and that actually wound up happening and I was able to get corporate sponsorship um, to help me with some of the seminars that I used to do concerning the book that I have and it really turned out to be a wonderful relationship that I developed with the corporate sponsors because once they caught on to what I was doing and they thought it was a good concept that would blend in with their company's overall goals and objectives, then I began to have a partner for years to come. And that is the sole goal of any type of sponsorship that you seek. You shouldn't just do it for the short term basis you know, I'm going to get this done because I have this event coming up and once I do that, then it's over. You should want to begin to develop a long-term relationship with those sponsors because they will come back every year and, you know, partner with you on your projects. And um, the key to getting the sponsorships, well, at least one of them, is making sure that you give them adequate time to assess the information and to work it into their budgets. Um, most of the time, if you do get a rejection, if you've done your homework and your research and you put your project together correctly and you still get a rejection, most of the time that will happen because the timing was not correct. You know, you have to know when these corporations begin to do their reviews for their annual budgets and make sure that you get that information in before time because if you get them in after time, then they're not going to do it because they're not going to have the funds to invest for another operating season. And they truly do have strict guidelines on that. So if you decide to go sponsorship, you have to find out what are those corporate guidelines in terms of, you know, you meeting their agenda. And then after you begin to do that, it is a matter of doing your research. Um, I can't go into all the details on that because this is a, you know, very short podcast, but I'm planting a seed. You know, what I'm trying to do here is to give you some ideas on what you can do to help to market your information. But what happens is you begin to do the research and there are certain things that you want to find out about the company, certain ways that you want to present your project to the companies. Um, and then there are certain ways to follow up. You know, you got to do your correct follow up and not just keep, you know, hounding and demanding. You know, there are all kinds of ways to find out what the procedures are for that. Well, once you get that down in place, then you begin to work it and just wait and see what your results are going to be. Now, what the sponsorships I, I was a part of, they did a lot of things. They supplied food for my, um, my seminars because my book was a cookbook. And so I was able to work partnerships with them by um, offering to use their products as I cooked for the audience that I was in front of. So they were able to support me with food. They were able to support me with equipment. And there were other things that they did for me as well. But it all began as going out, seeking the sponsorship, and then developing the relationship with them. Now, when I talk about developing a relationship with the sponsor, once they give you the inroad that you're looking for, then you have to determine what can I do for them to make them know that I want them as a long-term partner. So what I would begin to do is 
any time I sent out any information for any purpose, I always made sure to include that information in my data. So whenever I sent out a flyer or an invitation or a newsletter or did a commercial spot or had something that I was pitching on the air, I would make sure to pitch a plug in for the sponsor. Now, it's not just enough to pitch a plug for the sponsor if they don't know you're doing it. So then you write the sponsor and you say, well, this is what I'm doing to help promote your, proje your product. I am doing this, I am doing that. You know, you give them an ongoing list. And if you keep doing this throughout the year, they will begin to know this, that you are truly concerned about their well-being and you're not just seeking a sponsor. So that is how you get them to continue to work with you because you're developing a relationship. And it is so important to develop relationships with not just sponsors, but anybody, anybody that you want to become part of your book marketing or book purchasing options, you need to develop a relationship uh, with them. And, um, and then once we began to establish the relationship, then the following year, you can ask for more. I mean, if you ask for a certain amount this year and they've seen that you've incorporated their products inside of all of your proposals and the things that you do, then you could step it up a notch and say, well, would you be willing to do this as well? And I've never seen the door closed. I've never seen the door closed, but it's because I took the time to develop the relationship. Um, if you're doing podcasts for them, you know, if, you, if you're applying a podcast using their project, send them a copy of the podcast, whatever you're doing, because then when they do their uh, reports to their their boards and their reports to their stockholders. These are some of the things that they are going to include in terms of the community outreach because companies love community outreach and they will include some of the things that you're doing and, um, and show this as a part of your commitment to their corporate growth. So that's a good plug for you and it's also a good plug for them. So Whenever you're dealing with a sponsor, again, do your homework, do your research, put together a presentation that's outstanding, and make sure that within that presentation, you tell them what you can do for them. You know, it's not just about what they can do for you. What can you do for them? And then follow up appropriately, and after you follow up appropriately, wait for the response. Once you get the response in, you begin to work that project into your efforts and then develop a relationship with the sponsors afterwards. So that's my tip for the day and I hope you will go out and begin to seek sponsors. Find out who it is that is most closely associated with what you're doing and then go for it. I'm Linda Leon and thank you for watching.